World Travel Market London is by far the largest travel related conference in the world during the year. And as a travel advisor focused on international travel, being at WTM was a game changer for my business. And while WTM is absolutely overwhelming, after the last three years, I found the tips and tricks in registering, things to do before you attend, while you attend, and after attend to make the best response for your business. So let me walk you through all my tips and tricks for attending World Travel Market London. Your journey at World Travel Market London begins here on the main page at www.wtm.com. It'll then take you to London because that's the one that's coming up next. So as you can see on the page, there are many different WTMs, but London is by far the biggest. It always falls the first full week in November in at the Excel in London, which is a very large conference center set exactly with two stops on the metro. And the way that your journey begins is by clicking book tickets. At WTM, you've got eight different types of badges. There's the visitor and buyer, which are the people there that are as what we'd normally think of as a consumer. Then you have the exhibitors, which are the ones that set up the booths and are showing off the businesses they want you to do business with. They also have students, ministers, and media. They're people that get to enjoy the conference and find out information also. For me, what I'm going to concentrate on telling you is about the buyer and the visitor. And the reason you want to try to be a buyer is because that is the type of person that the people that are exhibitors know are the decision makers. So you will always get more attention and more involvement if you're there as a buyer instead of just a visitor. To get your information, you fill out the visitor ticket booking information. You're going to fill out information about your address and things like that. Then you're going to fill out about you. You're going to fill out information about your company. And then you're going to ask some final questions about where you'd like to go and what you'd like to meet with in World Travel Market while you're there. You get in here, there's a registration set area where if you've got a red invitation code you go there and then you start creating all this information about your business in here there's going to be many many detailed questions about things like your employees how much you spend in revenue per year things like that and it's important to fill out this information as completely as possible because this is where they're going to determine whether you get to be a visitor or whether you get to be a buyer. My first year, I filled out all the information and I did not qualify as per the website to get to be a buyer. So I emailed them and asked them what specifications they need for me to be a buyer. And we exchanged emails back and forth for a while and they then decided that I did qualify for a buyer. And being a buyer makes a world of difference when it comes to being at World Travel Market. As a buyer from World Travel Market, you get a lot more services than you do as a visitor. First off is that you get what's called WTM Connect Me, which this originally as you're going through August and September and the beginning of October will be online on your computer where you can set up appointments, you can look for companies, you can see what's going on. But once it gets closer within a couple of weeks of actually the show, it becomes an app that you can use also. As a buyer, you also get the access to the concierge service, which means you get to look up things easier while you're at the conference. You get a fast track on getting into the conference room floor, which is huge because the crowds at World Travel Market are huge. Finally, you also get access to the VIP and Buyers Lounge, which is where during lunchtime they'll have meals, as well as in the afternoon they'll have snacks. It's a great place to sit down and get yourself organized in between your meetings. They have also for buyers, they have special little meeting rooms that you can schedule and you can get great customer support just to help you out with anything not only at the conference but in London itself. Once you get your registration as a buyer, you come over to a Connect Me website and this is where all the special stuff happens when you're a buyer as far as getting to make appointments and look for companies that you will not have access to if you're just a visitor. So you log in, you give them your password, 
And this is what it looks like inside the Connect Me for a Buyer. You have the homepage, you have the inbox, and this is where you'll get invitations to meetings, you'll compare notes and messages with other companies, you will find out all the information about companies and ask questions. The diary is actually like a schedule. It'll actually be have all the hours from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and you will fill in your appointments here. If the system will fill it in as you make appointments, or you can manually put information in there. The conference part, it will tell you what's going on in the conference in general. You also have find exhibitors. If you know there's an exhibitor as far as a name that you want to go to, as well as you can go by product, like I look at DMCs. So in the inbox, you will get all your invitations. While you're in your inbox, you will actually get access to invitations for meetings. You can send invitations to companies you want to meet with. This will be where you can see you're confirmed, and you also have the ability to send messages back and forth with companies to decide if that's who you really want to meet with. Whenever a company sends you an invitation, this is for you to be able to schedule an appointment directly, which only buyers have the ability to do this. So when they send you an invitation, you have the ability to accept the invitation or to decline it or ask questions or view their profile. Whenever you view their profile, it'll show me the country they're specified on, as well as the activities that they are associated with and they're looking to. So you can find out more information about if this is who you want to do a meeting with and you might want to do business with. If you accept an invitation, you then get to choose where in the building that you'll have your invitation. So it's usually going to be at their booth, and that's really going to be usually your only choice. Then you get to choose which of the three days you want to meet. Once in here, you'll be able to see where you have available times and they have available times that could match up. So for me and meeting with Maria, my only choices on Monday are 11.30 and 1.30. This information is filled off of their schedule and your diary, so you don't ever have to worry about overlapping with other meetings. And that is how you book meetings with people you want to do business with. And over in the diary, you can see who I have made appointments with. What's nice about this diary is that it shows it here, but then it also, when you get near, it opens up and shows you the details of that meeting. And if you want to click farther, you can actually see where it's located and more details about it and who will be participating and any messages that we've already shared. Here's a tip from an expert. is you see where I schedule every hour on the hour, the Excel conference is massive and it's really hard to get everything you want to know in 30 minutes so I really recommend you actually booking appointments an hour apart so therefore you have the ability to get from one meeting to another another thing I suggest is that you book by regions so for me I did South America on Monday I did Europe on Tuesday and I did Asia on Wednesday. So therefore, I am not going from one end of this big conference room to a, another one. One thing to notice here is that these green were appointments that I could set up through the system itself. The problem though is that there's only so many slots and this company in Ireland was one I really wanted to meet with. So we in messages, in the inbox set up an, an appointment that wouldn't normally meet our schedule and I entered this one manually into my schedule so therefore I'll be meeting with Tanya at 10 o'clock where normally I the system will not allow me to make an appointment until 10 30. Also one thing to note which is nice is this diary allows you to set up 
times and days that you want to be available as well as you can set up times that you don't want to be available so that you can really spread out and be in control of your own schedule. One thing also I recommend is even though they have internet at the Excel Conference Center, there are times where there's blackout spots. So I really, really recommend you printing out your schedule so therefore if you really need to see where somebody is, you will have access to it. Managing all of your appointments and your meetups at WTM can be overwhelming. So for me, I filled up my diary by the first part of October. There were just no more available spots in my booking one every hour schedule. So what's common actually in the industry at WTM is to do just drop in traps. And let me show you how I handle those. Whenever I've got any of the invitations coming in now that I'm interested in, I go to their invite and I say decline. But I say schedule clash is the reason and I've got like a little blurb that I put in regularly. And it just says that I really want to meet with you, but that I've run on spots and I'll see you in London at WTM. And I really plan on meeting with these people. Then I've created myself a Google Doc, something very simple. And all it does is that I put in the companies I want to see, the country where they're located, the contact person, and where their booth is located. Now make sure you pay attention because some booths are in S, which is south, and some booths are in north. And don't mix them up. Later on, I'll go back and put my emails and my notes and things like that in place. So therefore, I have more information about these. And so I have literally have a running spreadsheet of the companies I'm going to. They're all by country group to make my life easier and by geography inside the Expel Conference. And then we switch over to the North Building. Any of them particularly give me information already, like their WhatsApp number, I put this in here. And this is one of the things I'll take as a add-on document whenever I am doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at W2M that when I have time in between the scheduled meetings, I will drop in and see these companies that are in the same region of the conference floor as the places that I have meetings. Another nice feature that you get as a buyer is the fine exhibitors. In fine exhibitors, it shows you everybody that's around, but you also can set up your filters. And you can filter by the name of the company, if you know what its name is, and it'll give you every list of everybody that has a J. Another feature that's nice is you can find products the same way. So if you want to do DMCs, it will show you all the DMCs that are registered at this time. And you can go on farther and decide by countries and things like that, which ones you want to do. As a buyer, you're allowed to send out 50 invitations of your own. And you can actually search for and find companies that you may want to do business with versus waiting on them to contact you. If you don't know who to invite to meet with you and you're a little overwhelmed, one thing that's nice about that website is that it actually will recommend companies that based on your questionnaire will be good options for you to meet with. And so you have the ability to send these people invitations also just like you can receive invitations from companies. Another section in the Connect Me, which is very nice to use, is that if you want to make any changes to the information that you originally put into your registration, such as your personal information or your company information, you can actually go in here in the Connect Me and modify that information so that you can make it more precise as you are going through the process of choosing companies you want to meet with while you're in London. One thing to note, I love this little section down here on the company profile information called Manage Content.
This is where you can add in some extra information that the questions do not answer. So for me, I include a letter about more of what my company is about. Then I also have my media kit, which gives my specifications of how many trips I book, as well as the affiliate and other DMC companies that I work with. You also have the ability in this area to add any videos in here that might help a company decide they want to do business with you. You can update this information anytime you like. So as I have added more DMCs or I've added more contacts, I've about every couple of weeks gone in, edited, and changed this information. Another part of the prep you need to remember is to download the app for WTM. They create a new one every year, and this is awesome for me because not only does it show my diary of all my scheduled appointments, it actually will sync with my calendar and it buzzes to remind me I need to have an appointment in the next 15 minutes and shows me where I'll be as a message flaps up. So therefore I go ahead and make sure I get moving to the place I need to be next. So make sure when you are going to WTM that you not only have access on your computer, that you have the app, and then I highly recommend printing out hard paper copies of your diary and your Google Doc sheet, so therefore you've got all the information in multiple ways in case you need to find one of the people that you're meeting with or wanting to chat with. During the days of World Travel Market, I always make sure that I pack certain items with me to make my experience on the floor so much better because you're down there for 10 hours selling yourself to these companies, and so how you act and how you present yourself is important. Even though the attire is business casual, I'm always in my tennis shoes because if my feet are unhappy, then I'm unhappy. I also make sure that I have my water bottle with me and my chapstick because the floor is actually very dry and I find that I just need more water and my lips just get tired. I also keep protein bars with me because while there are restaurants through the full, full hall, the fact of the matter is, is that sometimes they're just so super busy and you have such little time between your appointments that you just don't have the ability to grab food and that protein bar will be your saving grace. Having business cards is also critical and I make sure I have close to two, three hundred of them. And because many people you may be meeting with, your language is not their first language. Having a two-sided business card really helps. So on one side, I put just my basic information. And on the other side, I have my QR code, which gets me to more of the links that I have on social media, my website, things like that. So they can look at that at their leisure. But they have this side, which is my basic information, just right at hand. During the day, you'll meet with so many people, there's absolutely no way that you can keep up with everybody. So I've kind of come up with a method that really works for me that I've learned from other people at World Tribe and Market before me. So first off is I have a little book. And what I do with that little book is actually staple when people give me their business card, I staple it on the page. And that gives me free range to write everything I know about them while I'm having my meeting and it's a small little space which fits easily in my suitcases. I also make a point of taking a picture of the person that I'm meeting with and even though I may have to work around and figure out which meeting it was, because it kind of coincides with the people in order that I wrote in my book, I'm able to put a face with a name and with notes when I get back to my hotel that night. Because I am using my cell phone so much during the day between getting onto the app as well as taking pictures and things, I make sure that I have battery chargers with me so that I can keep my phone charged. Well, while there are places in Excel to charge your phone, it's easier to plug it up when you're going from booth to booth while you're traveling on your own little charger. Finally, I really recommend a really good bag. This is the one that I love. I've used it a couple shows. It holds up with the London weather well, and it's got tons of pockets, and it looks professional enough that it makes me look good. Plus, it's got a cool little thing that when I fly home, actually attaches in here to my suitcase, so therefore it's easier to do. Speaking of suitcase, when you come to WTM, expect that vendors will give you good things. You'll have access to maps, you'll have access to books and catalogs. They also give a lot of gifts, so I really recommend that you make sure that your suitcase that you fly over with has plenty of space so you can fly back all those great goodies and information. They'll help you remember all of your experiences while you're at WTM London. 
Well, I hope that all this information about registering, preparing for, and being at World Travel Market London has really helped you out. I have to tell you that if you're a travel agent, travel advisor in the international travel space, this is a place that you need to be. And if you'd like to forum more information,